Hi, I'm Jack Cuso, and today I'm gonna be unboxing a whole bunch of Wave 2 Ultras. <coughs> and Trox. Ow. Bakugan! Wave 2. I went to Walmart, and they had a lot of Wave 2 Bakugan. Here's a clip. <laughs> Which one of these should I get into first? Trox has a challenge level of 2, Nilius and Garganoid both have a challenge level of 3. I don't even know if I have a challenge level 3 yet, so these are both going to be really interesting. I've, I've opened so many Dargus, so I'm going to start with Pyrus. Get out of here. Pyrus Garganoid. As you can see, it has that beautiful Ultra Bakugan art on the side. Uh, you can see the back of the package here. Something that I just noticed is Ultra Bakugan on the back of the package. This little design is not Dragonoid. It's a uh, Hydrus, Ultra Hydrus. But okay, let's get into this. That's all the packaging you need to see. I'm getting better at opening these. I'm gonna be more careful with the cards than I usually am. Because sometimes these things come out just a little bit damaged just from the packaging, and that's annoying. Here's my cores, how to play, and both my little catalog, and the instructions. Here are the instructions on Pyrus Garganoid. I tend to not look at these, because I like to treat them a bit more like a puzzle. Put all this to the side. See what we've got. I'm gonna close them up. Wow. I should have looked at the instructions. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing here. Oh my gosh, they're so detailed. Oh man, I should've looked at the instructions. This is ridiculous. Wow, this is elaborate. I don't know what's supposed to go first, the wings or the tail or... Okay, it looks like the wings go in. This is so different from season one Garganoid. Then you can kinda fold the tail up. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's the way I'm doing it. I got it! Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that's... Insane. Did that come with three cores? They're not supposed to, but it feels like... Did I grab one from over there? Is this just three? We're gonna throw all the footage back and see if I accidentally got three cores. Here's my cores. That's gotta be some kind of uh, manufacturing error. Cause yeah, two of these are exactly the same too. There's two plus 200 B power Baku cores right here. I think they accidentally put two in this pack. You ready? Oh my gosh! Yo! That is the most blown away I have been by one of these transformations. It's gotta be the tail, because that, that is like a whip. That is insane. I've rolled this twice and it's worked perfectly every time, which is success rate I have never seen with an Ultra Bakugan before. Okay, it doesn't work every time. But, yo, this thing is like fearsome. Not a manual part in sight. And the magnet is on the tail. That is so cool. Really, I always talk about the detail, but the detail in the new ones is really good. 300 B power. I should look at the cards. I should see what kind of damage this thing gets. Ability card is a... Uh, Impact laser. I don't know if the ability cards are always the same or if they're random. So it's not a, it's just a common. And then the Garganoid Ultra character card right there. 300 B power, four damage. That's a lot of damage. No, that's a lot of damage. I would just keep rolling this all day if I don't move on and I've got a lot to get through. So let's go straight into Nilius. Packaging has got the thing on his, his. I'm so excited now. After that, there's no way Nilius or Trox is going to like live up to that hype because the hype meter is off the charts now. Of course, important paper. The instructions for the curious. Is the magnet on the tail on this one too? The magnet is on the tail on this one too. But it's like, it's way up there. There's no way this one's gonna actually land on its feet. At best, it's gonna be like that. I don't know, let's, let's, let's find out. Okay, now I have to look at the instructions. I'm afraid I'm gonna break this. I'm chickening out. Oh, I see. It was bent up too much in the package. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay, here we go. Darkest Ultranilius. In 
interesting. He doesn't flip. He just stands up like an absolute unit. Two heads. This one does have manual parts though. He's got little arms. Oh my gosh. That's adorable. Oh, they move in unison. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just take it easy, man. Oh, don't touch me. Personal space. Nilius, Nihilus, n n I don't know. I don't know why they didn't just call him Hydronoid again. Because he's got multiple heads. And the Hydrogers have, they have the multiple heads. If he evolves and gets three heads, I'm gonna be mad that he's not just called Hydronoid. Not quite as challenging to close as Garganoid was. One thing is it's actually kind of hard to roll them straight sometimes because the rolling track is flat in areas. So if it's rolling at a bit of an angle and it hits one of those flat areas, it will veer wildly in a different direction, which is a little bit annoying. But when you do manage to roll straight, they really roll straight. That really flings the cores off. I've rolled it a few times and it has kind of flung the core off every time. I'm not sure what the ruling is on that. If it obviously picks up a core but doesn't hold on to it, does that still count? Okay. Trox. This is Trox. This is T-Rex. This is what he looks like on the back of the package. He's a T-Rex. He's a little, he's a background, but he's a T-Rex. I'm actually excited for this one. I don't normally do Ventus, because I am, I am he who pyruses and darkuses. But never have I ventured. I didn't look at the Nilius cards. Hold on. Uh, I got Shadow Breath, which is a super rare. See right there, a super rare uh, Hollow Hacks card. Nilius Ultra Character Card. 200 B power. Six damage. That's a lot of damage. No, that's a lot of damage. His effect: when you land on a Shield Core, you get another plus 400 B power. That pushes you way over the balance curve, which could make this an actually really serious contender in a Darkest deck. That's awesome. Trox! Here's the Trox instructions. This is only a complexity two, so... Ah. Okay, Ventus Trox! Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. That's funky. Oh, he's got it under his little chin. That's so adorable. Oh, and that's why it's so flat. Because it's the underside of his chin. I guess that's the closest they could get to him having it in his mouth. Yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> that's so fun. Let's go on to Trox's cards. Uh, I haven't even taken him out of the thing. Oh, his cores, too. Cores. Ooh, I don't have one of the little DNA ones. Plus 500B, but minus one damage. Cards, Deafening Roar, Common Card, Trox Ultra. 300B power, only one damage. That's not very powerful. That's not a lot of damage. While I've got you here, I want to share something that I just figured out. Uh, these Bakugan from the new line are actually the same size as Bakutech B3. B3s were only ever released in Japan in the Bakutech line because I guess they just wanted to add some more features and complexity to the Bakugan, much in the exact same way that they did uh, in America with Battle Planet. Uh, so these are two B3 Bakugan right here. So I wasn't actually sure if B3 were the exact same size as Battle Planet Bakugan, but just putting them up next to each other, I think they are. B3s had a lot of interesting action features, such as this one, which both splits in half to allow for combining different kinds of Bakugan, to shifting around little metal plates on the outside of the casing to shift the weight balance for different kinds of rolling. And this one, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's a giant blocker Bakugan. You roll that out, right at the edge of the card, and your opponent's Bakugan are blocked from getting on. So that's a bit of a tangent, but I just wanted to confirm that B3 are at least very close in size to Battle Planet Bakugan. This one's mine. I don't know how that got there. 
Also, since I'm reviewing a Ventus Bakugan for once, Trox, I want to talk a little bit about Ventus and how it's changed in the current line compared to before. The, <laughs> pun intended, nature of Ventus has changed to be about life, plants, trees, more so than the wind of previous series. Also, the color scheme has been maintained from uh, the Gundalian Invaders color scheme, at least very close. I haven't compared uh, directly. Oh, okay. Pretty sure Mectanium Surge and Gundalian Invaders both use this color scheme for Ventus. The green is almost exactly the same green. It's a little bit lighter in Gundalian Invaders. They also use this metallic blue teal for the accents rather than this nice lime green. These definitely look more windy and these definitely look more earthy, despite the fact that they are the same base green, at least more or less. That's all I had to say about Trox, Garganoid, and Nilius, but let's go ahead and see some of these Bakugan in action. That was Pyrus Garganoid, Darkus Nilius, and Ventus Trox. If you want to see more from my channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get notifications anytime I post a new video. Don't forget to like, share, and if you have any questions, leave a comment right down below. This is Jet Kuso, and I'll see you next time. Whoop!